is the 45 of the Omer Tiferet of Malchut. Now, I want to tell a bit of a story here. A few years back, I read a book called The E-Myth by a guy named Michael Gerber. And normally when I read a business book, I either absolutely love the thing and tear it to pieces, or I can't stand it and within a chapter I've given it up and thrown it to the side. This one was a bit of an exception in that it drove me nuts for about 90% of the book, uh, largely based on the writing and the style that it was, it was given over in, but the other 10% was solid gold and really dictated to me exactly what I needed to be doing different in my own business. So what was that 10%? It was all about building systems. You know, I was talking yesterday in Gavor Sheb Malchut about how sometimes I needed to pull myself back in order to allow others to flourish in, in my business, to allow the business to really succeed. But pulling back, there are times I pulled back and the other people didn't flourish. That I didn't give the guidance and people went totally off the rails and things didn't work properly. As we've been discussing throughout this entire course, Tiferet is this perfect blend between chesed, which is this very engaged energy, and gavor, which is this very withdrawn energy. And I thought that this book, The E-Myth, really did a great job of giving a tiferet strategy towards working on business. What was that? It was to take a business, any business, didn't matter how small, and the, in the book, I think they used the example of a business that like just sells cupcakes, a very small bakery. And I said to use what was called the franchise method. They should run this small business with the blueprint, with the infrastructures they'd use to run a huge business. You know, in this woman, in this bakery, this woman was doing everything herself and kind of dictating to others what they had to do, but it was all based on her head. And, you know, she could do that for one tiny shop. But as the book was pointing out, that if she wanted to grow, if she was running a McDonald's with tens of thousands of, of places, of restaurants, no way you could run it that way with everything in one person's head. A McDonald's needed to have everything laid out very meticulously. It needed to have a system to run the entirety of the business so that you can get some 16-year-old kid in there for an after-school job and give them exactly, you need to do A, then B, then C, and you can go to McDonald's anywhere around the world and get a fairly consistent, low level in my opinion, but a consistently low level product. It's done all the same and a Big Mac's gonna taste the same no matter where you are because they built an incredible system. And his point was that, you know what? Don't think that the system is only based on having a giant franchise that has these tens of thousands of different, of different installations, that really that same system should be used even for a really small business. In fact, if it has that really strong system, that's what will allow it to grow. Don't wait till it grows in order to build a system. Build a system and then that will allow it to flourish. And I took this advice really to heart and I started thinking about my customer service team. We just had a tremendous amount of turnover in customer service a couple of months earlier with somebody who went out on vacation at the same time as somebody then wrote to me that they were you know, had a brain tumor and they needed to have emergency leave. And suddenly our customer service team with these two most veteran people gone simultaneously was totally thrown topsy-turvy. And there was no one to train the new people in, in it. And everything kind of fell to pieces. And I read this book and I realized, ah, I need to build a system here so that I'm able to give clear guidance because you know the new people came in and I thought they were better trained than they were and then I'd see that they were doing horrible things and they were reacting to customers exactly the way you shouldn't be doing and I was like yelling it's like how could you be doing that and I was I was doing that thing I was talking about in the week of Teferit of wow I was giving too much chesed I was giving them a lot of free reign and then I was giving all this gavor and I was saying no you're doing this completely wrong oh you need to change your ways and I realized that really I just hadn't given them a system I was always trust, trusting the more veteran people to pass on knowledge to the more junior people and hope it would all work well. But when there was this gap and my two most senior people were gone all of a sudden, that I really saw, wow, I can't just trust that anymore. And I started going on and building a system. And I started looking at every single chat that every customer service person had with every single customer and giving feedback on them. And at first I'd give a whole long feedback telling them, you know, did this wrong, did this wrong, did this wrong, did this wrong, did this wrong. And it was a disaster that people were like so shell-shocked at getting all this, all this advice and getting so much negative feedback at once. And then I realized, you know what? That's not a good way to do it. What I need to do, and this was the time I was reading the book, is take that feedback and rather than give a whole long explanation, write a whole article in what I call our, our company knowledge base, which didn't exist up till that point, but I created a knowledge base. And whenever I saw something and said, wow, this isn't handled the way I'd like it to be handled. Okay, how would I like it to be handled? Well, I'm going to build a whole long article on that, saying exactly how we do things. 
And then when somebody didn't handle it that way, I would just send them, you know, go to the article, our knowledge base and see article 6.8 and read that and then send me a new response so you can show me that you really got it right. And they do that and this, then they send me a new response and sometimes they still need a little bit more tweaking. But then when new people came on, suddenly this knowledge base that I was working on just as I've seen problems became the manual that they could get trained on and they could see, wow, here's the 80 or so different scenarios we go through with, with customers. Here's how we like to handle each one. And it became a very clear system. It didn't require a lot from me to be enforcing it. I didn't need to be tough with them. I didn't need to be showing a lot of, a lot of Gavora. Um, but at the same time, they had parameters and they had everything very clearly laid out in a way that was easy to follow. And when they didn't follow along precisely, I was able to easily adjust them back to it. So you know what, go check out number 4.2 and see, you know, we might need to readjust according to that policy over there. And they were able to do it. And this is kind of the idea, the message I want to leave with, this idea of Tiferet of Mahut. You know, we've got Mahut, we've got these dominions that are ours. How can we build them in such a way that we're giving just the right amount, where it's in perfectly balanced and in harmony, where we're not totally jumping down people's throats and all over them and micromanaging them and doing everything for them, which would be a little bit of kind of that chesed of Malchut where we're just jumping all around and engaged constantly. And we're not giving negative feedback or pulling way back as with a tremendous Gavora response, but that we're given just the right way in a balanced, harmonious way so that people are able to flourish but still be getting guidance and feedback. And of course, that's a business example, but it applies in any dominion. It applies, you know, if you're a teacher, it applies to your classroom. If you're a parent, it applies to your home. Having clear rules and structure and a clear system of feedback can really allow you to be able to create this beautiful, balanced, harmonious environment in, in your domain.